Today we'll be making a monochrome Carl Benjamin Master Study. This will allow you to practice working on mixing your own black paint, but also adding in a single hue, but with the advantage of having all the levels of value contrast. So your palette constraints are to mix your own black. You may use also white and a single hue mixed within each of those levels of value. Here are a couple examples of past works in this tutorial's work. You'll start with your Carl Benjamin printout of black pillars. Fold it into thirds as if like tic-tac-toe to, to copy it in a grid form format. I like to use my nails as the edge to create a nice fold so that it creates a line so I don't use my graphite pencil. If you're translating it exactly to scale, then you can just outline the image of the printout and then drop a dash where the lines are. From there, you can use a couple different techniques from cop to copy the image. I suggest to just start working with the contour lines, the out contour outlines of each of the elements included in this painting. Remember that the background also is a value. It usually is a very dark value at about a level four. What I like about this piece is it shows you how even in a minimal, abstract, hard edge piece, the consideration of all levels of value contrast is a huge part of it so that the viewer may receive the information that this painting is setting forth. Please, oh please, include a value scale. So, it's all drawn out, it's all ready. Let's get painting. Mix your own black paint. Ta-da! Will we use white? Not at first, but yes, later to test it. We'll be using primary yellow, primary red, and primary blue with a palette knife. Blue is pretty strong, the red is not so strong, and the yellow is kind of weak as well different with every paint line, different with every kind of choice of hue. These are just primary colors, so there's not the cadmiums of the warm that you would have for a very strong yellow or a strong red. Here we go. Let's see how this mix is going here. Looking kind of blue, but let's keep mixing it up. Of course, we will be testing it by tinting it white, right? That's what we do. And you only leave the white in the tinting area until we are happy, happy, happy with the value of our black. And we don't want it to be too warm or too cool. We want it to sit right in the middle, neutral. We want it to be neutral. Ew, yippee skippy, I'm so excited. We're gonna be testing it out. Add some white to the testing area. your palette knife all clean use the white because our human eyes are not able to see all of the darks we're not cats come on guys you got to add whites so our human eyes can see the warmth or coolness of it I like this this is a good black okay one two three four five are the levels of this scale I set it up in the palette at first one plus three equals one plus five equals three. I know, I know this math doesn't make sense, but we are making art. So we don't have to always make sense, do we? Anyhow, level three, the mid tone, take it and mix one plus three equals two. And then take three plus five, equals four. Okay. Four, 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 mix the four, put it in the area. Then you need to take some color that you like. 
Do you want to mix a little red in there? Do you want to mix a little blue or a little yellow? Or mix your own color, have fun. I chose yellow. Took a big glob of yellow and I mixed it into each one of the values, every single one. Even the tint of white, all the way to the shade of black. See how it's a different color, a different hue than the scale on the left? So monochrome means one color. Mono one chrome color. The little scale shows what palette you're working with. It's very helpful for remembering. It's even nice to sometimes do these in a sketchbook to have little, if you have a painting that you've made that you just love the palette, oh my goodness, please. You should have a page in your sketchbook that has this in it as long as it's acrylic paint. Because acrylic paint won't eat up your paper. But it can, you if you record it, it will be awfully nice to see later. Okay, so let's work dark to light. Oh, no, no, no. Let's work on the mid value. Not sure why, I usually work dark to light for paintings, but I guess because of these hard edge elements, we're gonna go ahead and free jump. I think this is a great practice for you to work on different types of uh, handholds for your brush and also the dexterity of your wrist and hand in using your paintbrush to get these curves, these edges. And remember, to get an edge in painting is so different, so different than drawing. You have to go one edge and then the other edge. It depends if you do it very direct painting, then you want to hone it and get it precise the very first time. You may also tape off areas around it to get that perfect curve. I shall not be doing that. I want this practice for my hand it's like a, you know, you're like an athlete. You have to keep the mind-body connection going. And this is one of the ways that we help you do it. The background is a level four. And it looks like I'm using a flat brush. Oftentimes the angled brush can be really helpful in these broad areas too, either one. To get the proper dark value contrast on the white page, it will be necessary to go over the paint more than once so that you don't see the white of the page below it. A much tinier brush is needed in these little detailed areas. Again, a great practice to start to hone in and see your tendencies. What are your tendencies while you're painting? Some of my tendencies are that you, as I move to the right, my right dominant hand, some of the angles aren't as easy to achieve. So I have tips and tricks that I do so that I can still arrive at a nice angle, but also with a good amount of speed. I don't want to spend my whole life on one painting. I want to get a lot of ideas out. So it's one of the reasons that I'm kind of a faster painter and not so neat and tidy. It's about the mark making as well. Uh, I feel for me the mark making and the texture of the paint and how the paint is laid out, each brush stroke is important. And there's times that that element references a certain moment in time. So for me, having a even smooth area over the entire painting is not as meaningful as showing some of the brush strokes. So as the background is being worked in, it's drying. You know it's drying if you touch your finger to it and it's tacky. Tacky means that the paint is not coming up, it's kind of dry in the top. Uh, this is a 1.5, so it had to be a, a special mix for the 1.5. I hope you're enjoying making this. 
it can sometimes be a little tedious at this point in learning different sorts of mixes and color palettes, but it really should pay off for your future works. I actually still have my students do this uh, every semester and about once a year I still repeat this just for my own practice really. I thought this is such a little lovely color. Look how this monochrome palette, it could be just a lovely thing to work with. Simple, you don't have to go wild and crazy with the colors. And it's so interesting how the mid-tone sits so much more in a gray. I also really like the level five once the black pillars are all laid out. I just think it's lovely. But you know what happened? Is I ran out of black paint. I ran out. What are you gonna do if you run out of black paint? What are you gonna do? You're gonna go back to your messy palette? Yes, you are. You're gonna go back to your messy palette and you're gonna remix. Because guess what? I want you to be able to make this forever. I want you to be able to make this so well that you can go and teach somebody else. That's my goal, that you can go and teach this to somebody else. Okay, as it's being mixed, it's looking still a little warm, but keep mixing, keep mixing. Let's see what happens. How do we test it? Test it by tinting it with white because our frail human eyes, they just, they just can't see through the dark very well. Okay, how'd I do, how'd I do? It's okay, I think it made it a little cooler. Okay, this time I'm gonna save the extra black because, hello, that took some time. If I can save some black paint in a container, hey, maybe you should too. And then it's ready, 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 Freddy for the next time that you need to paint, paint, paint. Not only do you need to mix the black, you also need to re-add the color that you chose. So we color match it, we see if it's the same. It is, it is. We start laying out the color. Again, just like the level four, we will need more than one pass to fill in this value since the white of the page is very vibrant. Oftentimes we'll make an underpainting when we're making a larger painting, so this problem won't be as much of a challenge. And then I like to turn it because, as I said before, my mark making and my angles are better on the left side of my body because my right arm can move at an easy angle for it. Maybe this is because I have an injury from volleyball, I was a volleyball player, or, but it's also a little bit everybody has that. On their dominant side, it's like not as precise unless they are using different tips and tricks. Hey, thank you for joining me today in making this value contrast monochrome of Carl Benjamin's work. For more, please visit my YouTube page and like. Thank you so much. Make smart.